John Nash shares that illness with my grandmother, who's dead now. Um, she died in 1976. But she was a great person, but she did um, believe at one point that my grandfather was trying to kill her. And the problem was that when you say to a crazy person, no, he's not trying to kill you, they'll go, no, he's trying to poison you. Well, he did the cooking, so of course everything that he cooked was poison. Oh. Uh, and uh, when you say, honestly, he's not trying to kill you, then you're in on the conspiracy, so you're trying to kill him. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to uh, convince someone who's saying, um, in, you know, you're saying things and they're not saying. Um, she was also Jewish, and uh, she was Jewish at the time in England, where they were actually getting rid of Jews from England as well. That happened not just in Germany, but they were tried for the second world war, a lot of them were interned. So they started lying about their Jewishness. Wouldn't tell people they were Jewish, they changed their family. And this is a poem about her. She was always known um, as Mims, um, which is short for Mademoiselle, but that's just the way it was. Mims, my grandmother. Adding to the list of things from that time, saying, Hello! Down the cave tunnels of an echoing underpass. Lily of the valley, toy water. Clear, like vodka, yet a sweet musk that throws itself up your nose and into a head. Earthworms that writhed under the spade and were supposed to become two separate worms, but apparently died in this life. Mothballs, these which to me existed mostly in my memory, I found just one shelf away from an electric tennis racket only yesterday as I dripped from the unexpected rain. That waxy, camphoristic smell, they fired up something in my mind that had been buried since I was a seven-year-old. Oh, her Saturday fish, rock and chips, the British kind, mind, which was an ordinary treat for her, and yet I found none these past four years in Tornado Island. And Toby, her sausage dog, a slip-back, that son swine dog who growled foul breath death threats at me, <laughs> even as she, he was scooped into the rolling landscape of her her Jewishness, fearfully concealed from the Nazis and the black shirts. Even my father cannot remember why he always called her Mims. She shook from the shock treatments of the 1950s, where they made her discordant voices fade into the background. Her husband's career as a serial killer, bent on her gruesome dispatch, cut short by sleeping jabs and a wild trip to fairyland and back to reality with the help of high voltage, toe-curling, back-thrashing, leather-biting electrodes for her crazy bits. I liked her, but I especially liked her outside toilet. An adventure land full of every possible insect. <laughs> Cold enough for polar bears. And the fact that she had an old Anderson air raid shelter in her landing strip back garden, an air raid shelter from the blitz and German bombers, and a clock that topped theatrically and chimed the hours and the quarters, older than TV. Oh, but more so than this, there was an enormous mahogany radio with an analog bakelite dial that listed the names of the stations. I remember. Luxembourg. It's three. Then she died, and these shadows are all I have to remember her by. And that 